everybody knows that social media is not good for them. Even the people that think it's good for them, I think are lying to themselves. You know you spend too much time on it. You know you don't really get anything out of it. Then you lie to yourself about why you need to constantly be on it. You can't turn it off. You need to connect with your friends. You need to follow the news. Whatever the rationalization is that you have for why you need to be on social media. In this video, I'm going to challenge that greatly. I'm going to argue for all the reasons we need to disconnect from social media, cut it out of our lives. And yes, I'm here doing that on YouTube, which I don't really consider a social media platform, although it fits many of the definitions of such. My name is Mike. This is the Starts With Me channel. I am going to be reviewing a video with Dr. Huberman or Andrew Huberman and Cal Newport. And Cal Newport, if you don't know who that is, is very famous in the world of uh, getting rid of social media, simplifying our lives, getting away from the over busyness um, that we're all kind of wrapped up in. He's got many great books. Uh, he's an amazing guy. I suggest you check him out if you don't know who he is. Anyhow, back to this idea of how horrible social media is. Outside of YouTube, I do not use social media. It has been, I think, either almost three or four years since I have been on it. Beautiful, wonderful, amazing experience. Some of the main things that people often report to me that they don't like about it is, one, they're always comparing themselves to other people. This isn't rocket science. You see someone else, the flashy life, the flash representation of their reality in one moment that's curated. Then, as a human being, you cannot help yourself like we compare ourselves to other people there's nothing you can do about that okay what you can do is relate to the narrative in your head that's comparing you to other people but in this two-dimensional space of social media you cannot stop your brain from automatically comparing yourself to everybody you're either better than them you're worse than them you're just the same as them or maybe you're watching a, a funny little cat video or something like that which I would say is pretty um, mundane. And that was kind of what social media originated as, sharing funny cat, dog, blooper videos. Beyond that, I think it's horribly destructive. It's a huge component of our culture war. It's a huge component of much of the dysfunction going on in our society. And I highly recommend people cut it out of their lives. Okay, why don't we start watching the video and then we will Recently, my podcast team was in Australia, and um, my producer and uh, close friend here, uh, Rob Moore, uh, instructed all of us to get rid of social media on our phones, except one guy who would post our weekly episodes announcements. Um, and it was pretty brutal at first. And then coming back to social media has actually turned out to be more challenging. Huh. Um, you really experience the friction coming back the other way. And then one experiences the the lack of friction, and that's where it gets scary. It's it's so interesting the way that the brain can adapt. Um, the friction leaving something behind, um, the friction coming back to it. Um, and I think for people listening to this, I, I raise this because I think, of course, many people listening are, you know, have work that they really need to focus on. They may be having issues with uh, productivity and burnout, et cetera. I think a lot of people use the phone and social media because it fills their life. You know, it, it provides some enrichment and they aren't necessarily committed to specific projects. But I guess through the lens of the, the let's just call it the Cal Newportian lens, one might argue that those people uh, almost certainly have untapped creativity, untapped resources within them that um, they don't yet know about because they're essentially using that energy elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, I think for a lot... Just want to hop in there. So his team was directed to get off social media on their tour, I guess it is. And maybe that's to avoid uh, bad press. Maybe that's to just be focused on what they're doing. Nevertheless, it's a directive to likely make them more productive and useful and competent while they're going about their business. Obviously, that's my opinion. A couple of things he mentions this idea of filling a void in your life. Humans do not like to be alone with their thoughts. And social media distractions are a wonderful way to soothe that angst 
of being alone with your thoughts. And that's really, again, what you're doing. You may have all kinds of rationalizations for it. You may have all kinds of reasons, you know, why you're on social media. It's important for you to accept the fact that you are simply numbing boredom. You are simply distracting yourself from more important things. And I don't think it's really debatable. Other people would disagree, obviously. Now, that's different from watching and learning something, okay? Although you could argue watching and learning things in a different environment or context is likely way more effective. For a lot of people, it's papering over the void, right? You have this void in your life because there's uh, unmet potential, uh, unmet interest, um, living in misalignment with the things you care about, right? I mean, a lot of people, this is the classic sort of catastrophe of life, right? Social media, and there's before this, it was other things, right? There's other uh, intoxicants or other sorts of distractions. It's a way for some people of essentially putting a screen over that like gaping void. And it like just makes it bearable enough that you can kind of go on with life. And so it is true. If you just rip it out, you see the void. And that's really difficult, right? I mean, because I, I did this experiment for one of my books. I ran an experiment with 1,600 people, and they all turned off all their social media for 30 days. 30 days. 30 days, right? These because are young people, old people? A whole mix. Okay. A whole mix, right? So not just. Oh my God, 30 days. Who could possibly imagine? Isn't it amazing? And it's sort of not a, it's a mockery of our collective dysfunction in relationship to these things. If we talk about addiction, technology addiction, social media addiction, 30 days is the minimum recommendation. I should probably include a little uh, link to my de dopamine detox video uh, that I, in reference to my conversation with Anna Lemke about her book, Dopamine Nation. 30 days is the minimum requirement for a, at least somewhat of a useful dopamine motivation system reset so that you can approach the thing you're trying to change your relationship to in a way that's more healthy. So 30 days is the minimum. Just university students. I recruited them from my, my newsletter readership. So they weren't university students. And it wasn't formal research. It was, you know, I put out the call, right? So this is not randomly sampled, right? But I put out the call and I said, here, I'm going to walk you, walk you through this. Um, and then I got a lot of information back. So people reported back how it went. And this was like the number one thing I heard was it's really hard at first, right? And so who are the people that succeeded for 30 days versus those who didn't? The, the ones who didn't succeed tended to just try to white knuckle it. Just be like, I don't like how much I'm using social media. I'm just going to stop because it's bad and I don't want to do a bad thing. I'm just going to like, you know, hold on the table with white knuckles. They wouldn't make it 30 days. The people who did succeed followed my advice to incredibly aggressively pursue alternatives in those 30 days. So it's like, go learn new hobbies, join things right away, get like really structured about your day, um, get into exercise again, learn how to knit again. A lot of people said, oh, I learned about, I forgot how fun libraries were. Like you can go into this building and like all the books are free and there's there, you can just grab whatever. And it's okay if you don't like the book because you didn't have to pay for it. Uh, I'm going out with friends again. I'm, I'm okay. Every week I'm going to have, you know, we're going to have drinks with this person. And every Thursday morning, I'm going to go running with this person. The people who aggressively tried to put in place a more positive alternative through self-reflection experimentation, they lasted the 30 days and beyond, right? And so then I came to realize like, oh, I see what's happening here is you have these unmet needs. These tools can give you sort of a, a simulacrum of meeting them. I need, I'm a social being. I need to be connected to people. Well, I'm texting and like doing comments on social media. It's sort of touches that a little bit, just enough that you don't feel hopelessly lonely, but it's not really fulfilling that. Um, I have a need to like see my intentions made manifest concretely in the world. Humans want to do this. Well, I'm, you know, posting these things and people are responding. It's sort of this simulacrum of real creation. So it's like kind of satisfying that just enough that it's not just intolerable, right? Um, and so what happens is if you remove that, you have to actually fill those things the right way. So now I'm not socializing on social media, but I'm going out of my way to sacrifice time and attention on behalf of other people. I'm feeling the social void in the right way. Now I don't really feel like I need to go back. Uh, I'm actually build, making my intentions manifest. I'm learning skills and building things. Now the sort of pseudo construction and collective attention economy of social media, I'll post this and you'll like it. I'll like this. Um, 
I don't need that anymore to, to fill that void. So it's like you have to fill the void first. So, so you know, five years ago, I wrote a book that was a. Just want to jump in there. Beautiful description. This idea of white knuckling it in addiction recovery, to reference that again, you know, you might call that the dry drunk or white knuckling it. And that, as he mentioned, refers to you just stop doing the thing that's bad and you don't replace it with anything else. And then he goes on to explain beautifully, we do need to fill the void with something else. And rather than this false sense of meaning and having your intentions manifest in the world through your social media posts and your liking and your commenting and blah, 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 blah. We want to fill that and address that with real life experiences, real connections to other human beings, real endeavors in the world, being of service to others, doing things, etc. That's what we need to fulfill the illusion of social media connection with. And he also mentioned this idea of values. When we, when we pull off the tape or the Band-Aid, as he says, you are left with a void. What is that void? It's likely important for you to get in touch with that void. What is your calling? What is your yearning? What matters to you inside here? The thought that just popped into my head is so many of the, what do they call them? The keyboard warriors, the people that shout and scream and post things online and complain about the world and all that idea. They're not doing anything to make the world a better place. If you want to make the world a better place, or if you want your life to change in any which way, chances are you could discover that if you weren't so destructed, um, excuse me, dist- there's many other ways this conversation could go. I wanted to cover that briefly. It's a lovely synopsis of one approach and perspective on what social media is doing to all of us. It's robbing us of more meaningful service to the world, more meaningful connections. It's getting in the way of you getting in touch with yourself and what really matters to you. And it's filling our delusional mind about what matters because we think it matters if we click a button and post something and comment on something, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't do anything in the world. It just makes things worse. Is it possible for you to get off social media? Maybe some of you watching are off social media. It would be great if you could comment on that in this video somewhere. I would sincerely appreciate that. Why don't we watch the last uh, minute or so and then we'll conclude. was about reforming this part of your life. And a lot of the book was had nothing to do with technology, but about how to actually just rebuild parts of your life. And on my podcast, honestly, like one of the big topics we talk about, which is crazy that I'm a technologist and you know, I write about trying to find focus in a distracted world, is this thing we call the deep life, which is just straight up building a meaningful life 101. And it's like crazy that my podcast is talking about it. But on the other hand, it's not because my is the podcast people go to when they're fed up with the digital world. And it turns out if you don't get the analog world working right for you, you need something to avoid staring to that void. And then the digital world will do that well enough. It's like just good enough to keep life tolerable. I love that. Just good enough to keep life tolerable. Is that what you want your life to be? Tolerable? Just enough? Just constantly on the hamster wheel of seeking the next tolerable moment the next tolerable post ah, it's horrible it's just blah. try not to get too judgmental but it i know for me it was so ah, it was just unhelpful it, it was delusional it was really a repetition of my addictive past the rationalizing the lying to myself the justifying the whole need for social media i need it for my business i need it for this i need it for that i think that's bullshit uh, most of the time for most people. I will do some more commenting on the social media space uh, in a future video. Anyhow, I hope you found that helpful. Please like the video, comment, subscribe to this channel, consider supporting it on Patreon. I wish you all the best. Without further ado, I will stop talking. Take it easy. Peace out.